Item transportation is one of the most important fundamentals of Create, but do you really know how all of it works? A week ago, I posted a quiz asking which of these three blocks can move an entire stack of items at once. And the answer is actually all of them. A lot of people don't know that, and some of them even accuse me of lying. So I think we all need a refresher on how to move these guys around. Shoots are like the hopper's cooler sibling. Like a hopper, they can insert items through the tops of inventories and extract items through the bottoms. They have an internal inventory like a hopper does, but it only has one slot and can't be accessed by a GUI. You can right-click a shoot with an item inside of it to take it out though. Additionally, one item stack will pass through a shoot at once. You can see here we have four cobblestones in this shoot and three cobblestones in this one, but they will not combine. Shoots can only pick up 16 items at a time and redstone cannot lock them. They can only move items vertically, but shoots can connect to each other diagonally. If you place a shoot while looking at the side of another shoot, you'll create this cool looking diagonal shoot. These guys can be diagonal for ages and you can have more than one diagonal connection, meaning you can split your shoot lines or even combine them. Shoots don't even have to move items downwards. They can move items upwards as well. Attach a fan to the bottom of a shoot network and make sure it's blowing upwards. You can check the direction of an attached fan with goggles. Now, when you insert items into any shoot, it will travel upwards and there is no limit to how long the fan stream will travel. Fan speed only affects how fast the items move, but not how far. A fan that pulls downwards will speed up the item's descent and will pull items towards a branch of a split shoot network. Or you can get the opposite by attaching the fans to the tops of a network. A pushing fan makes items go down faster, and a pulling fan sucks items upwards. You can even make funky UFO-style item snatchers. As far as decoration goes, you can wrench a chute to give it a window in order to see the items inside of it. You can encase them with industrial iron, and you can even waterlog them. Now, smart chutes are chutes, but uh, smarter. They come with a filter slot, can pull up to a stack of items at once, and can be locked with redstone. Unlike regular chutes, they cannot be placed down diagonally, but will work just fine connected to regular shoots and fans. In fact, smart shoots can deposit full stacks of items into regular shoots, allowing a regular shoot to move a full item stack. When the smart shoot is pulling from an inventory, you can hold right click while looking at the filter slot to change the amount of items they pull at a time. You can either set an up to number or an exact number. If shoots are the hopper's cooler sibling, funnels are the shoot's cooler older cousin. Funnels work on all sides of an inventory and in all directions, but do not have internal inventories. They can be locked with redstone like a hopper and can insert and extract up, down, left, and right. When placing a funnel on an inventory, holding shift places it as an inserting funnel and not holding shift places it as an extracting funnel. When extracting upwards, the funnel tosses the items upwards slightly so that a funnel above them can actually catch the items. If the funnel is extracting onto the floor, it will wait until there are no item stacks on the block immediately below it before extracting a new stack. You can tell the direction of a funnel because the little arrow at its top and you can use a wrench to change a funnel's direction. When the funnel is placed on the path of a belt, it will connect to the belt and lose its arrow. Here, the direction of the funnel becomes the direction of the belt. When attached to a belt, you can wrench the funnel to extend it forward. This is mostly decorative, but it does change the entry point of the items on the belt a little bit. A funnel can still pull items off the side of a belt and in that case, its direction is set by placement or wrench. Andesite funnels can only extract one item at a time, but but they can insert full stacks, whether dropped on the ground or from a belt. In fact, the only difference between a brass and andesite funnel is that a brass funnel can extract up to a stack from inventories and has a filter slot like a smart shoot. And like a smart shoot, brass funnels can be set with an exact or up to number. Now things do get weird once we slap these guys onto a contraption. See, when on a contraption, the only difference between funnels is that brass can be filtered. Otherwise, both will extract and insert a full stack of items at a time. To insert into a contraption, it has to move into items on the floor. Funnels can insert vertically on contraptions as well, but it is extremely finicky. They have to be moving at a certain speed, and I just wouldn't recommend it. You might assume that the best way to do vertical item transfer is shoots, but that's totally wrong. Shoots require rotational force and enough space, but with portable storage interfaces and a little bit of setup, you can get instant item transport, not just vertically, but in any direction. Portable storage interfaces don't actually move items at all. Instead, they act as an input or output point for items along a contraption that has an inventory attached. To set this up, make a structure that connects two portable storage interfaces to each other and attach at least one chest, barrel, or vault to it. Glue it all together and attach it to a mechanical piston set to 
never place. Now when you give the contraption a small push, the portable storage interfaces will kiss and the contraption will remain locked in this position. Anything you insert into this portable storage interface is immediately retrieved from this one. The speed is only limited by whatever you have extracting items. Now these guys have to be one of the most fun ways to move items around and they actually serve a purpose too. Weighted ejectors will toss items from themselves to a targeted block. They need a clear path to actually reach their target though. You can set the targeted block by shift right clicking it with the ejector in your hand and then placing the ejector. An ejector without a target will eject to the block directly in front of it. These guys are super useful because you can set an amount of items for them to toss at once. If you're in a pack where brass stuff is expensive, these guys are really great at substituting for regulating the flow of items. They can even toss items directly into basins, chutes, and funnels, which is extremely fun. On the topic of item regulation, let's talk about tunnels. They may look like and rhyme with funnels, but they have nothing to do with extracting or inserting items. These guys attach to belts in order to regulate item flow. Andesite tunnels can't really do much but when a stack of items pass through them, it will attempt to split one item off to a perpendicular belt line or depot-like inventory, which is very useful in some cases, but is the only function they have. Otherwise, they're a nice decor and can be wrenched to change them from like windowed mode to solid mode. Brass tunnels are where the real magic happens. They have a ton of settings that allow you to make some really convenient item sorting systems, and on top of that, they can be filtered. There are seven settings on brass funnels, and each of them requires the funnel to either be connected to other funnels horizontally or with a belt or other output perpendicular. Split will split item stacks evenly amongst outputs. Forced splits will split item stacks evenly, but will wait until all the outputs are available before doing anything. Round Robin will output items in a round robin sequence, and Forced Round Robin will do the same thing, but it will not skip over unavailable outputs, it will instead wait. Prefer Nearest will move items to the nearest tunnel if the main output is blocked, Randomized is a random output system, of course, and synchronized inputs will wait until each connected tunnel has items inside of it before letting them output. They will not share items between the other, so you do need to have individual inputs for each one. And of course, how could we talk about moving items without mentioning belts? These guys are super basic, they can transport item stacks alongside themselves, and the faster the belt moves, the faster the items move. They can only transfer items when they're flat or diagonal. A vertical belt of any kind will not work. They're great for assembly lines since items will wait underneath assembly machines to be processed. Interestingly, they also count as inventories, so chutes, funnels, and hoppers will insert and extract items from them. Because of that, if you want to do a quick vertical item transfer with belts, you can actually use two funnels like so. Belts can be waterlogged for the purposes of book washing too. Although mechanical arms will not move items very far, it's super useful for precise item transport. It can target blocks within a 5 block radius of itself to take or deposit from. To target blocks, right click them with a mechanical arm in your hand, and continuing to right click them will cycle between depositing, which is orange, or taking, which is blue. Once you've selected everything, place it down. The arm will remember the order you selected items in, and in its default mode, round robin, will distribute items in that order, skipping unavailable inputs or outputs. In forced round robin mode, it will act the same, but not skip over unavailable items or outputs, it will instead wait until they become available. And in prefer first mode, it will always prefer to take from the first selected take point and deposit to the first selected deposit point. Not only can the arm move items between belts, funnels, and chutes, but it can target a number of blocks to move items into or even interact with. While you can't filter an arm, it will respect the filters of its input and output points, so don't worry about keeping things organized as it will not pick up items it cannot deposit. They can wear goggles as well. And dance. Very important. All right. Watch my other guys join the Discord, become a member, goodbye! I just want to use this time to say thank you so much to the members of this channel. They are helping this channel and me become closer and closer to becoming a full-time content creator. So if that's something you'd be interested in, subscribe and become a member.